Hey guys, so I wanted to make a skit because of reaching 100 subscribers, but the skit was getting too long. So I'm gonna show you my favorite part, which is this part right here where I happen to lose one subscriber. Okay, I'm not gonna take long, I just wanna say that I wasn't expecting to hit 100 subs this soon. Like, I haven't even finished this tutorial series and I'm already at 100. But anyway, let's get on with the video, wall interactions. But before we begin with the wall interactions, there are a couple of things that I have to do. If you just wanna know about the wall interactions, jump to this time in the video. There will be timestamps in the description. Guess we're starting this now. Alright. First, I want to mention something about my last video. More specifically, about the tip where you don't bonk your head on the corner, you know. Some people said that it would be better if I used a circle collider on top of the player's head instead of writing all of that script. And immediately I thought, wait, did I waste my time writing all of that code? But then I was like, nah, it probably doesn't do the same thing as the script does. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't. Look at this. What is this? Get out of here, man. Inconsistent jump height. On my last video, jmaple741 mentioned the fact that you can actually jump higher when you're running in this game. Here's the difference. Normal jump, and here's the jump while running. jmaple was also kind enough to give us the solution. All you have to do is set the drag to air linear drag before the add force function inside the jump function. Secondly, we have to move the jump function to after the air linear drag is applied inside the fixed update. And now, it's fixed. In my last video, Shield said that we should actually use the time.fixed delta time inside the fixed update. So we'll do just that. And we're done! I don't know how to transition from this to the actual video. So, roll a cringe transition, I guess. Alright, into the wall interactions. But first, we have to remember what Aristotle once said. Before you interact with the wall, you must first find the wall. To do this, we first need to declare a layer mask for the wall, a float called wall ray cast length, and two bulls, on wall and on right wall, just so we know which wall we're standing on. I'll leave these two public for now. Inside the check collisions function, we'll draw ray casts to check if we're on wall or if we're on right wall. I will also draw these ray casts inside the on draw gizmos function, like this. Now, back in the Unity editor, we need to first create the layer mask for the wall and assign it in the script. I'll also attach this layer mask to the walls inside the scene. Then, give the wall raycast length a value and then we test. And as you can see, we can detect walls now. Now we can make these walls private. The first wall interaction is the wall grab. This one is pretty simple. First, we declare a wall called wall grab. And this will be true whenever we're on wall and we're not grounded and we are pressing the wall grab button, which we will be defining later. Then, inside the fixed update, we'll check if wall grab is true. If it is true, then we call our wall grab function. Inside the wall grab function, we set our rigid body gravity scale to zero and the rigid body velocity to zero. Inside the editor, go to Edit, Project Settings, Input Manager, and we're going to add a new button here called wall grab, and I'm gonna set it to the O button. But before we test, I have to talk to you about the animations. I made so many changes to it that I forgot to record everything. So I'll show you all of the animation scripts in the end of the video. Cool? Cool. And when we test, the wall grab works. Almost. When we're slightly away from the wall and we wall grab, he kind of just hangs there in the air. There are two problems here. First. He, sometimes he can be slightly away from the wall. And second, he doesn't always face the wall correctly. To fix this, I created this function called stick to wall and we call it inside of the wall grab function. What this does is pushes the player towards the wall he's wall grabbing and makes sure he always faces correctly. I also don't want him to move when he's wall grabbing. So I created a pull variable named can move and this will be true when he's not wall grabbing. Also, inside the fixed update, before we move our character, we're now going to check if he can move before we move our character. Next up, wall slide. 
This might be simpler than the wall graph. First, a variable called wall slide. This variable will be true when he's on the wall, not on the ground, not grabbing the wall, and his y velocity is less than zero. I also created a float variable called wall slide modifier with an initial value of 0.5. Inside the fixed update, we'll check if wall slide is true. If it is, we call the wall slide function. Inside the wall slide function, we'll set our y velocity to max move speed times wall slide modifier. We'll also call the stick to wall function. And now, we did it, boys. Alright, next up, wall run. This one is probably simpler than the wall slide. First, a float variable called wall run modifier with an initial value of 0.85. Secondly, a bool called wall run. This will be true when we're on the wall and we're pressing the up button. Next, we have to make sure we don't wall slide or wall grab while we are wall running. So in the fixed update, we check if we can wall run. If we can, we call the wall run function. Inside the wall run function, we set our y velocity to vertical direction times wall run modifier times max move speed and we'll also call the stick to wall function and now the wall run is working perfectly yes for the wall run animation i took the normal run animation and flipped it 90 degrees over so if you want the sprite sheet that i created it'll be down in the description now for my favorite one the wall jump this one was my favorite one in the planning stage of the video not in the actually coding part because it was so frustrating when i couldn't get it to work it was it almost broke the entire script first let me explain the types of jumps we'll have the neutral jump next up the neutral wall jump and finally the wall jump so like i said before adding the wall jump function to this script almost broke everything so after days of debugging, somehow I managed to get this to work the way I want to, including the animations. I'll get to that part in a bit. Well, anyway, here are the changes I made to the script. First, let's start with functions. In the jump function, we have a vector2 parameter now called direction. And when we want to decrease our extra jump value, we now check if we're not on a wall. And when we add force down here, instead of using vector2.up, we now use the direction parameter. We have these two new functions here, the wall jump and the neutral wall jump. The neutral wall jump is actually a coroutine. If you don't know what a coroutine is, Unity actually made a great video explaining what it is and how it works, so check it out, link in the description. These three functions used to call the stick to wall function, but we don't anymore, we actually moved it. I'll show you what it is in a bit, but come along, we have no time to waste. Now for the variables. I added another condition to the can jump variable, or on wall, and I created a bool variable called is jumping and set it to false. And I also created this float variable called wall jump x velocity halt delay. Pretty long, I know, but I have my reasons. Inside the fixed update, where we check if we can move our character, we add this line of code now. We'll also add this line of code when we're not on the ground. And where we check if we can jump, we add all of this now. And finally, for the wall slide, wall grab, and wall run functions, we first have to check if we're not jumping. Then we can call the functions. And if you're still wondering about the stick to wall function, it's right over there. Yeah, and that's it. That's pretty much all we have for the functionalities. Now let's talk about the animations. The part that gave me the headaches. You'd be very wrong if you think that working on the animations was easier than working on the wall interaction because it's not. It was harder than the wall interactions. I was pulling my hair out. Based on it weeks, weeks into months, months into years, and several years later, I'm still looking for the missing semicolon. <laughs> While Anderson over here is cooling off, I have something important to tell you about the animations. All of the code that we have on animations right now, just delete it. Now, we're going to create a new function called animation. And I'm gonna leave this blank for now. Anderson over here is going to tell you what code you should put inside that function. Uh, but anyway, the animation function looks like this now. Major changes here. 
For the animator tab, go watch my video for where I teach you how to do the animations. I did most of the work there. Here I only added a couple of things, so most of the thing is over there. Just ch check, check it out. It doesn't hurt anybody. Only a couple of new things here. We have the wall grab and vertical direction parameters. We have two new animations, the wall grab and the wall grab. Now for the transitions. For the jump transition, I actually set cam transition to self false. And we enter the wall grab animation when wall grabbing is true. And for the wall run animation is when the vertical direction is higher than zero. And for this transition from wall grab to landing, the condition is is ground is true. And that's it. We're done. I know I said I was going to implement the ledge climb for this video, but I'll save that for the next video, which is the dash. But that's it guys. I really appreciate you guys watching my video and subscribing, so thank you for all your support. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. There are two problems here. First, there are two problems here. First, inside the wall grab function, we set our rigid body grab Inside the fix, inside the wall grab function, we set our rigid, rigid body gravity scale. Inside the fix update, we set our rigid body gra Inside the wall grab function, we set the rigid body.